Phil Ebener with Video School Online, and in this video, I'm explaining the difference between a self-hosted WordPress site and WordPress.com. This is a common question I get from beginners who are looking to build a WordPress site, but end up on WordPress.com and then wonder about themes and plugins and all of the things that you can do with WordPress.org. The key difference is the amount of control you have in what your website looks like. WordPress.com is an easy to use, free to start web creation platform. You can think of it like any other web builder like Wix.com where they have a limited amount of styles and options for building your own website, but it's really easy to get up and running and it's free to start. WordPress.org or the WordPress web building platform is a free open source software to create your own website. You're in charge of hosting the website yourself, installing your own themes, installing your own plugins, and while you have a lot more control, there's also a bit more cost. Here I am on the WordPress.com website, and you can, like I said, get started for free. I'm gonna click on the click see plans option. So you do have this free option, but when I click the compare plans, you can realize that it can actually end up costing a lot to get started. If you want to use any sort of premium theme or be able to monetize your website, you're going to have to start to pay from WordPress.com. And still, when you're paying like this, you don't have access to all of the thousands of themes and plugins that you can use with a self-hosted WordPress site. You have to go up to this business plan to be able to install your own plugins, upload themes, have Google Analytics, remove the WordPress.com branding, and all of this stuff that actually, all of this is free when you use WordPress.org, you just have to host it yourself. What's confusing for some people about WordPress.org and self-hosted WordPress sites is that when you go to WordPress.org, it's not easy to understand how do you actually get started with building your own website. And that's because you actually don't go to WordPress.org to get started. You start with your host or you can build a website on your own platform or your own server on your own computer and then upload it but really what you're going to wanna to do is purchase your hosting and then install the WordPress software onto that host. And then you can log into the back end of the WordPress software dashboard to start building it. I have other tutorials here on the channel about how to do that or in the full WordPress for beginners course, you learn all of that. There are many different hosting companies out there. The most popular ones are like bluehost.com or hostgator.com. And while these are the most popular, they also get a lot of complaints from people because the customer service might not be as good. But personally, I've used Bluehost for the past six or seven years on my own website and I haven't had really any complaints. Here on the wordpress.org website, what you can see are all of the themes and plugins that you have available to you. These are all free and you can also find lots of themes that are paid on other websites too that might be good for specific e-commerce or different types of businesses or websites, but there's literally thousands of them available to you. Same with plugins. Plugins are the extensions that you add to your website to do specific tasks like blocking spam, speeding up your website, securing your website, adding contact forms, growing your email list with opt-in forms and all kinds of things like that. Hopefully by now you understand the differences between WordPress.com and a self-hosted WordPress.org website. Really quickly, I'm just gonna run down the differences again with themes, which is basically the look and feel of your website. You don't have control on WordPress.com. There are only a limited amount of themes available to you. With WordPress.org, there's thousands of free options, or if you pay for a theme that you find online, you can upload any WordPress theme to word, your wordpress.org website. Same with plugins. There's a very limited amount of plugins for wordpress.com and you have to pay extra to be able to use those. And on wordpress.org, there's thousands of free options plus any premium ones, you can install it and there's no added cost except for the cost of the plugin if it is a paid plugin. In terms of the expense and cost of getting started, you can start for free on a wordpress.com website as we saw, but then it quickly adds up if you want to add any bonus features. 
we saw those prices going up to $25 a month. For starting your self-hosted website, there are great beginner plans from Bluehost and HostGator that cost as little as three or $4 a month, but typically you're going to look at paying five to $10 a month for your hosting plan. You'll also need to purchase your own domain name on both platforms if you want a custom domain name, and that typically costs between 10 and $20 per year. In terms of being able to monetize your website, with WordPress.com, you're not able to monetize. With WordPress.org, you are. In terms of branding, with WordPress.com, they're going to put ads on it, they're gonna put their own branding on it unless you pay them. With your own WordPress.org website, you have complete control to put whatever branding or remove whatever branding you want. Extra things you might be interested in, with WordPress.com, you have very limited analytics. With WordPress.org, you can install advanced plugins to see all of your Google Analytics and other analytics for people visiting your site. With WordPress.com, you can't really create your own membership site or e-commerce store. It costs extra to do that. And with WordPress.org, you can start doing that for free once you have it hosted and up and running using different plugins or themes. Lastly, one of the biggest cons to a self-hosted website is that the maintenance is a little bit more intense. You are in charge of updating your themes, updating your plugins, things that are crucial for the security of your website. With WordPress.com, all of this is done automatically because you're using a platform that you have less control of, but they're doing all of that backend work for you. So with a WordPress.org site, you have more control, but you have more work to do to make sure it's up to date. At the end of the day, both are viable options for getting up and running, but you should make this decision right now before you start building your website. It's not easy to convert from one to the other. So while I personally recommend a self-hosted website, in the end, I think it's going to cost less even than a WordPress.com site. If you're all about free programs and free platforms, WordPress.com might be the one for you to get started with. If you have any questions about these differences, send a comment below. And if you're interested in taking your WordPress skills to the next level and a complete course on how to create a website, a self-hosted WordPress website, we're also going to include a link for my WordPress for Beginners class below. Thanks a lot and hope to see you in the class.